Hey, we're still working on our shop build out here at Woodworking with Wes. And today we're going to do something that we've had comments that they wish we would do. And that's build some uppers. And I'm going to show you how you can become a master at building uppers by following just a few of the simple techniques that I use every time I build uppers. And I want you to stick around to the installation of our wall units. I have a trick that I'm going to show you that I've used for years that makes installing wall cabinets so easy you'll be amazed. As with all of our projects, we start with the whiteboard drawing so that it gives us our cut list. Our cabinet will be 30 inches tall, 34 inches wide. We'll have two of them. We've listed out our cut sizes on the other side over here, our sides, our bottom, our top is a two-piece. There'll be an 11-inch top panel with a three-inch face rail that makes up the 11 and three-quarters. We'll have two hanging cleats to the back of the cabinet, two adjustable shelves, and down here we have listed the size of our doors. Let's go to the table saw and do our cutout. Okay, I've installed my 80-tooth triple chip melamine blade on my saw, and I have cut some of my stock to width, and now I'm going to cut it into the 11 and 3 quarter inch widths that I want. I start by splitting my sheet and then going back and cutting my 11 and a quarter, 11 and 3 quarters. Just watch and we'll go through. First thing we'll do is turn on our dust collector. Off we go. We'll go ahead and complete the rest of our cutout. It'll all be just like this. I often wear gloves when I do cut out for melamine because of the sharp edges. In fact, you can see that I might be ready for a new pair of gloves. I'll go ahead and get the rest of the cutout done. Okay, we've completed our cutout. Here's our sides. These are our tops with the top rail. These are our floors. These are our hanging cleats. These are our end panels, and I'm going to show you that at the very end while we put those on. Here's our shelves, and then over here is our doors. But the first thing we have to do is we have to edge band everything. And I've showed you edge banding before, but let's review that. Let's put another piece on and show you how. The edge banding that we're going to be using, of course, because we're using white melamine, is a white iron-on edge banding. Just a white paper product with a heat-activated glue on the back. We tip it up like this, make sure that our edge is clean. We lay it on there. My iron is heating up. I bought me an old iron at an antique shop because it's very heavy and I really like it. You want it to be hot enough to really melt that heat activated glue, but not so hot as to burn your edge banding. And so we Iron it on like this, really pressing down, making sure that we're driving that heat activated glue into the edge of our melamine stock so that it gets a good bond. Making sure we get it good and hot. Yes, we are. All the way out to the edges. Be careful not to burn yourself. I've done that before. Iron on your edge all the way end to end. And then I take a J roller, this is a J roller, and I roll my edge banding that I've just ironed on and make sure that I've really got those edges pressed in good so that it really makes a good bond with that heat activated glue. Okay, just like that. And our edge banding is a little wider and I made it a little longer than the piece of wood. And we'll go back and file that and cut it to fit so that it's nice and clean. I'll show you that. Okay, this is a, a piece of our hanging cleat. I did a small piece so you can see. I break off the ends like that and then I just take a file and I file that end so it's smooth. And I'll do that on the other end also. Because I don't want to crimp this edge, I hang it over the edge of something. On this particular case, it's the edge of the stack of my drawers. And I just take my file 
and I just work my file down the face of my stock and I just peel off that and this is just a paper product so it comes off really easy you just file that paper product off and clean it like that and I go back and make sure I got all my little pieces off then I turn it around do the same thing on the other side file the end and go all the way down my edge we're going to be doing this on all of our edges that are exposed and I'll show you that when we get ready to assemble all of our exposed edges will all be edge banded so that it's nice and clean and white with our edge banding all on and all filed I take a piece of 150 sandpaper I just lightly very lightly sand the face of our edge banding to make sure that it's clean and then I just sand that edge that we've filed and I take my sandpaper and I just kind of gently roll it like this and that just puts an ever so slight round edge nice smooth edge on our edge banding and you don't want to sand too much you don't want to go through and, and expose the edge of your raw wood but just a very light rounding motion like that makes it clean and gives it a soft edge we'll go back and we'll do all of that on all of our edge bending and then I'll come back and we'll pick up where we left off we've spent the last two or three hours and it took about that long in order to iron on all of our edge bending and do all the cleaning and filing I wanted to show you what I was talking about now this is an end to the cabinet so this is the bottom of the cabinet and being as it's an upper you want to edge band the bottom because that's going to show this is the face of our panel so this is the upright panel just like that here's our bottom shelf so just the, the just the facing of the shelf shows raw edges on the sides where it nails into the other cabinet we're getting ready now to assemble the cabinet and being as we have two I wanted to show you one all put together and we're going to go over exactly how this is going to look and then we'll build it and I'll show you how the parts come together this is the other cabinet all put together sides just like I showed you here's the bottom I went ahead and made my shelves fixed shelves just because I decided I wanted to have the additional strength of a fixed shelf rather than an adjustable shelf I'm not going to be putting a lot of things on here that I'm going to need to adjust for so I went ahead and made them fixed shelf here is our top rail that we talked about and inside you can see hanging cleat up and down and then of course a back this will have doors on it when we get all done and I'm going to put an end panel on it before I install it too again like I say stick around for that installation I got to show you something but let's go ahead and get the other cabinet put together with our side cab side of our cabinet ready to go we're going to tip it up like this this is our floor of our cabinet so the bottom of our cabinet I'm going to turn it around like this so you can see how it comes together and makes a finished bottom I mean this is going to be exposed this is an upper so this is going to be exposed I use my 18 gauge inch and a half brad gun to align I give it one up top and I want this to be perfectly smooth and that's why I always use my little brad gun to get it aligned I give it three nails like that and I'm smooth on the bottom then I come back with my 16 gauge wide crown staple and now I have a secure nailing of my floor to my side we'll do the same thing to the other side and then I'll show you how we do the top We're getting ready now to nail in the top of our upper it is a panel and a rail it's, so it's a two-piece let me show you on our cabinet that we already have put together here is the top rail that I was just showing you the upper panel makes the top of the cabinet the lid 
And so we have a, a rail. Now, the reason we do this like this, put a top rail in a cabinet that is a frameless construction, if this was a kitchen cabinet installation, we would have some sort of crown to our upper, and this is where I would attach the crown up here, and my doors will stop about here. We're not going to have a crown mold in our garage cabinets, but we're gonna go ahead and build the uppers the exact same way that I always do. So first thing we do, align with our 18 gauge brad gun. Secure with our staple. And then I'll do the same to the other side. Then we'll come back and we'll put the top rail in. Now that I have the top panel in, we're getting ready for the rail. And the rail is just nailed in with the 18 gauge inch and a half brads. We put a couple along the side. We want to make sure that this is flush. We put a couple there, one to hold it there. Same thing down at this end. We want to make it smooth at the top and flush with the face. And then just attach it with some nails through the face and into that top panel. Now, like I say, if I was in a kitchen cabinet installation, there would be a crown mold and these nails would be covered by the crown mold and the doors would go down from there. Let's go ahead and put in our fixed shelves. Our shelves will just be nailed in from the side. They're a little bit shorter than our side panels. This is 11 and 3 quarters. This is 11 and 1 quarter. And you know me and my spacer jigs. There's our spacer jig for our shelf. This is a perfect right angle. So if we put it in here, it tells me the space, but it also lines up my shelf perpendicular to my side and gives me a nice square installation. I give it one nail and then I turn it around and I actually use this to mark where my nails go. And I've put me a little mark here on top of my jig so that I can line it up with the middle of my shelf. And now I can just put my nails on my line and they're lined up to go in the middle of my shelf. Again, we come back with our stapler and secure our shelf. And there we go. And we'll go ahead and put the other shelves on the other side in, same way. With our cabinet assembled, it's now time to put in the hanging cleats. I have a four and a three. The four goes on the top of the cabinet, three goes on the bottom. And we'll roll our cabinet over. Okay, we're at the bottom of the cabinet right now, so let's take our three inch hanging cleat and it just nails in between the sides and above the floor of the cabinet. And again, only secured with nails. Two from each side. And then across the bottom. And this is where we put the screws in that hold our cabinet to the wall. That's why they call it a hanging cleat. We're actually hanging our cabinet off of these cleats. Okay, now for the upper part. And our four inch cleat. Put three nails in it because it's a four inch piece. Okay. And nail it through the top. 
And let me turn that around so you can see how that looks. So we nailed from the side and then we nailed across the top. And now let's go ahead and put it back on. I've already cut the back to size. Here's the bottom of our cabinet. There's the top of our cabinet. We'll be anchoring our back with three quarter inch small crown staple. So get our nail gun ready. The back also helps to square our cabinet. So I make sure that my backs are cut perfectly square and I line it up perfectly along the bottom of my cabinet and secure with the staples. Okay. And then I go up one side And you can tell already that our cabinet is good and square because I barely had to do anything. That's a good sign. Okay, I will go ahead and complete the installation of the back. One thing that I do just to make sure that I've got an extra hold on the back and on the, the installation process when you hang the cabinet, I have a three inch hanging cleat here and a four inch hanging cleat there. So I give a double row of staples across the bottom and across the top. Okay, with our back nailed on, let's take a look. All right, ready to go. Now I have one more thing I want to do before I install is I want to go ahead and put our hinge plates on and our end panel. Let me show you what the end panel looks like. I made an end panel that is a half inch wider, so I'm 12 inches deep on my side. Let me turn it here like so you can see it. 12 inches deep on the side, 30 inches tall. I made a 30 inch tall by 12 and a half inch end panel. We'll put the end panel on like this. It's flush with the back, flush with the bottom, covers all of my nails and it comes out here just a half inch. Now the reason I do that is if I'm doing a kitchen installation, when my door is here, this covers the crack that is behind the door. So there's a, a gap where the hinges are. And this kind of makes just a more finished edge for my end panel. Just a little bit nicer look. When I would install the crown mold, I would put a sub crown that this is a half inch beyond this surface. I would put a sub crown that was a half inch and I would nail a sub crown in there and then the crown mold would nail here and here and it would make a nice finished look to the top of our cabinet. Like I say, because we're in a garage cabinet, we're not going to worry about a crown mold. I might do it later, but I'm certainly not going to worry about it now. But anyway, this is how the end panel will go on to hide all of our construction of our cabinet. So there'll be the look. Let's go ahead and put some doors on. Okay, we have our cabinets assembled. I have them sitting side by side like they'll be installed on the wall. I have put the hinge plate on the bottom here and I'm going to put one more on here. I'm going to show you how they're installed. I determined that the, the spacing from the bottom of the cabinet to the bottom of the hinge plate was an inch and a quarter. So I cut myself a little inch and a quarter spacer stick. These are face frame mount clips, but I like them because they just lip over the edge of my, even though this is a non face frame cabinet, this is a frameless construction. I still like this particular mounting plate for my hinges. And I just, it has a little lip. This is a ceviche hinge. It has a little lip that catches on the face here. And then I just slide it down to my spacer stick. and then put in the screws and then I'll show you how we installed the top one in a minute. We put the top one in, we actually mount the top plate as we put the door in so that it spaces perfectly. Now the next thing that we do 
is put on an end panel. Now I've already got the other end panel on the other side on. And so I want to go ahead and show you how I did that. We use inch and a quarter grabber screws. Now I had somebody ask me what is a grabber? A grabber is just a coarse thread wood screw. Okay, let's put our panel here flush to the back. So when I put my finger back here, it's flush to the back. That gives a half inch overlap and it's down flush with the bottom. We're going to clamp it on so that it's right where it should be. Let me make sure. Okay. All right. There we are. And then I'll put another one up here and hold it in place. And then let me come around this side here. These are square drive. And after we get all of these screws in, we'll put some white screw caps over the top of them to hide our screw. I use my Makita impact driver and I really like this Makita gun. I've had lots of different kinds of guns over the years and still have some different kinds, but I like my Makitas the best. I put three up front and two in the back. Now when we put the cabinet on the wall, we'll tie it. We'll tie the two cabinets together the same way. We'll clamp it and screw it together with inch and a quarter grabbers. This is the wall that we're going to be installing our uppers on. I have marked a line here on the wall. This is where the end of our end panel is going to go. I've also found my studs so that I know where I can put my studs in. And I want to introduce you to the trick. This is a dead man and he helps me hold up my cabinets. What I've done is typically cabinets are 18 inches from the countertop and that's what I have this built 18 inches. When I was in business building kitchen cabinets, I had several of these that were different heights for different reasons, but I always had a dead man to help me install the uppers. I installed the base units and level them so that they're good and level and then I don't have to worry about leveling the uppers they're already going to be level because my dead man is equally spaced all the way along. And what I do is I just take some scrap wood, I nail it together to the height that I want, I put some supports in it to make sure that it's square and it isn't going to come undone, and then I put it up like this, and I'm going to grab onto this cabinet. This cabinet's pretty heavy because it has shelves, and I'm just going to tip it up on my dead man. Now this is a cabinet that's heavy enough that there's no way I'd be able to lift and hold this and screw it in. So this is where the dead man really comes into play. This is a heavy cabinet. Just tip it up. And put it up like that. And my dead man holds it while I've screwed in place. I also made it long enough so when I get ready to put these cabinets together, I can put the two cabinets together and make sure that they're even across. So I'm going to go ahead and get my cabinets installed, but you can see how my dead man helps me. We're going to be tying our cabinet to the wall with two and a half inch grabbers. Again, a grabber is a coarse thread wood screw. And so I'm going to get over here so you can see it. I've marked, you see, I have a little mark here. This is where my stud is. I've already checked my cabinet for level and plumb. <laughs> and pull that right into the wall. Let's put another one right here. Here's our next stud, and you can see I've marked it also. All right. Okay, now I'll go ahead 
get the rest of the cabinet tied to the wall and we'll come back and put some doors on. With our cabinets tied together and tied to the wall, it's time to remove our dead man. And the cabinets are secure on the wall. We don't have to worry about them anymore. Let's go ahead and hang a door. I'm gonna show you a little trick I do makes it easy for me anyway. I don't know if this is the right way to do it. This is the way I do it. I go ahead and I mount the bottom clip. I showed you that. Then I take the top clip and I go ahead and just put it in the hinge. Now I'll show you how to, to uh, release these hinges in just a minute. But the hinge just the hinge plate just clips into the hinge. Then what I do is I come around here and I put my bottom hinge into the clip, click, and then I hold my top hinge plate where it's supposed to be. I'll see if I can get my hands out of the way there, but I don't think I can. And now my hinge spacing is correct. Let me go ahead and get the other one on this side and I'll show you how we adjust them. With our doors mounted, now we have to adjust them. I, this is a hinge and a hinge plate, just like I have on every door. There are several little adjustments. Now this is a ceviche hinge. There are many different kinds of hinges. Bloom is one that I used to use a lot of. I like the ceviche because of the additional adjustments. You just take a Phillips head screwdriver. You can adjust the door in and out, back and forth, up and down. And so just by you these, using these little hinge plate adjustments, you can line your doors up. So let's close these doors and see where we are. I haven't adjusted these yet. Okay, we're a little uneven right there. And we're a little tight at the bottom, more tight at the bottom than we should be. Let me get my glasses on here. And what I do is I just start with the most obvious adjustment. This hinge needs to be backed out a little bit in order to even up my space. Still more. Right there. A little bit. Okay. That looks pretty good. This can be backed out just a little bit here. And you just work your screw back and forth to where it is what you want. Now I'm too high on this door or maybe too low on this one. So let's adjust the height of these doors. We'll bring this one down. And whenever you do the adjustment of height wise, you do it on both hinges so that it keeps it even. Now see, you, we're almost even already. See how quick that was. Let's move this one up just a touch. Oh, and there we are. And our gap is fairly even, and we're even across the bottom. We've got these doors adjusted. That's how easy it is. Now, I don't know if the ceviche hinge is, is available online, but I'm going to find you a comparable hinge that I can recommend from Amazon so that you can get hinges that fit. And let's go ahead and get the rest of them put on, and then I'll come back and put some hardware on. Well, we're getting the handles put on. Let's just show you how we do a handle. This is the little jigs that I make, these little homemade jigs. I have a video that I showed you how to make the jig, but this is the little jig that I did. I mark where my holes go. I just take my drill bit and put in the holes that I have marked. I drill them part way and then I go back and finish them. Okay. Just machine screws that hold it on. We put them in from the back side like this. And then we take our handle, line them up. Voila, handle, just like that. 
Now, one thing I forgot to show you that I wanted, that I told you I would show you, is how to release the hinge. Okay, the hinge plate is in the cabinet. The hinge is in the door. It clips together, and every hinge is a little bit different. This one has a, a little lever on the back that releases the hinge, and then you can take your door off. So if I wanted to go out and take the door off, all I would do is release that little thumb lever on both hinges and the door would come off. Now, just so you know, my cabinets in, this, in the shop here are just white melamine because that's what I wanted. I wanted it nice and bright and white. But if you were building cabinets for your house, the same construction goes on. The only thing you would do different is the end panel that you would put on would be uh, the door or the wood that you have chosen. Your edge banding would correspond with your door, the wood that you would use. And we have several videos on different kinds of doors to build. Uh, look those up if you want to build a different kind of door and have them for the cabinets that you're doing. But the construction of your upper is the same. So now you know how. Well, thank you for joining us as we built some more cabinets for my workshop. I like them. I love these bright white cabinets that go in my shop. They make things bright. But anyway, upper cabinets are a very important part of the skills that you need to have in your cabinet making repertoire. I hope today answered some questions for you. And now you know how to build upper cabinets. You can do it. We'll see you next time on Woodworking with Wes.